Receiving hate for getting the benefit of the doubt from the officials, there were also moments where Giannis was tackled at the goal line. Considering he never flopped, conversely catching the Pacers out of position all throughout, Adetokounmpo slowing down the game by getting to the charity stripe, you can blame the refs for, not him. Overshadowing a historic night, the Greek freak got greedy by going after a Pacers assistant coach Habib over the fence style in search of the game ball. This resulted in Pacers GM Chad Buchanan, who somehow got caught up in the scrum, suffering a bruised rib after taking an elbow. Meanwhile, the Pacers assistant who took the game ball was trying to give it to a rookie, Oscar Shibwe, who recorded his first NBA career point. Giannis setting his team's scoring record for a 55-year-old franchise that's featured legends like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar makes it kind of inexplicable that Indiana thought it was in their right to snatch the game ball for themselves. Stay tuned. But just 12.8% of you watching are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for the support. So at the end of the day, I know a game ball isn't that deep, but from my unbiased perspective, it's still tough to reason with how the Pacers thought it was in their right to take it for a rookie. On a night where Giannis passed franchise all-time great Michael Redd for Milwaukee's most ever single game points. It's especially questionable when taken in that even with certain Indiana players knowing the ball meant something to Giannis on a record-setting night, didn't give it back. They would instead throw shade at Giannis and be revealed as saying to each other, quote unquote, keep that ball, keep it, saying to Giannis, you're not getting that ball, I like that. We'll get back to the shenanigans later on, don't worry. But drop in his second 50 plus point scoring performance of the season, both of which have come against Indiana, the Greek freak cemented himself as one of only five players in the entire 77 year history of the association to post a game of scoring 60 plus points on 70 plus percent shooting. Despite the amount of free throws the officials rewarded him with, you have to factor in that Giannis got to the line without flopping, conversely, strictly utilizing brute force. Adetokounmpo was the first player since Andre Drummond in 2016 to attempt 30 plus free throws in a single outing, as the man's 32 charity stripe attempts matched the Pacers as a team. Lost in the shuffle based off casuals disregarding the fact that Indiana's lack of size and proper positioning was actually their true downfall in terms of not being able to hold Giannis off the line, Adetokounmpo led this game in not merely points and free throws, but in field goals made, rebounds, steals, and plus minus. In the 2024 season as a whole, the Bucks are big time threats to win it all, a contending status garnered annually with the generational slasher and Giannis Adetokounmpo at the head of the snake. Taking full advantage of the $50,000 costing Hakeem Olajuwon workouts, this dicey inverted jab step takes place while Giannis hauls it in. This triple threat gets healed caught out of position behind Giannis as he anticipates mid-range jumper before a hop step to sandwich healed and Turner still sees Miles give a great contest, but a picturesque outstretched yet close to the basket layup release completes the two-point conversion. Specifically displaying how elite of a transition score that Giannis is, he to be fair ranks third in total fast break points, trailing SGA and D Mitch, but is just under 10% more efficient in this scenario than those two, and to find a player more efficient than a on the fast break, you have to scroll all the way down to the number 55 ranked transition score in Zion Williamson. After Zion, to find someone more efficient than Giannis on the fast break, you'd have to scroll all the way down to the 163rd ranked transition score in Rudy Gobert off the ball as the trailer, from gaining stride leverage into his retrievals where he's then able to either burrow through low men while staying square or slip back door to finish lobs. On a separate note, then there's how Giannis can manipulate late to set up drop coverage as the early offense off the dribble attacker. Turning defense into offense, watch how Adetokounmpo utterly denies this Chicago action. Clean reach in, sees the rest of his body following the path of that motion, cutting off Turner's DA Joe angle, then taking the freaky palm extension to keep alive the high velocity low cross he saves it to himself with, before two leveled momentum crosses lead into a gather step plus Euro around Halliburton. Additionally, from hunting mismatches to simply beating opponents to the punch with that extra bit of hustle, those are a couple other ways in which Giannis' boisterous ground coverage and transition can be displayed. In terms of his work in the half court, Giannis ranks number 25 in both total points scored as the pick and roll man and total points scored as the pick and roll creator. Showing you how definitively versatile that fact makes Giannis, no one else is even top 50 in both of those categories simultaneously as of this recording, with LeBron being closest at 39th in Rollman scoring and 51st in Creator scoring. 
In other words, this means there isn't a player in the association who's even close to as effective as Adeta Kumpo in terms of altering roles in the pick and roll. Getting back to the drama versus Indiana that made waves across social media, and despite his team stealing the game ball on a career night for Giannis, which got the Greek freak riled up, Pacers head coach Rick Carlisle tried to play it off. What happened at the after the game was uh, was unfortunate. There's a misunderstanding about the game ball. It was Oscar Shibwe's first NBA official NBA point. So who? We always get the game ball. We were not thinking about Giannis's franchise record. So we grabbed the ball, and um, a couple of, a couple of minutes later, several of their players ended up in our hallway, and there was a big. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. A fracas, a melee, a melee, whatever. I don't think any punches were landed, but my general manager got elbowed in the ribs by one of their players. Um, and so he certainly has a bruised, bruised rib, and <clears throat> who knows, you know, if it's anything more than that. But um, unfortunate situation. We don't need the, the official game ball. There's two game balls there. Um, you know, we could have taken the other one, um, but it didn't need to escalate to that. And so, you know, really just, you know, unfortunate. <clears throat> don't know who. Don't know who. I don't know who. I'm not naming any names. I'm just telling you what happened. <clears throat> there were four or f there were four or five of their guys in our hallway, <laughs> you know. So anyway. Just stuff that doesn't need to happen. You know, the, the, the thing with the ball is just, I mean, we don't care that much about the official game ball and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I mean, but um, anyway, unfortunately, that'll be a bigger story than the game. Thankfully, for the sake of this discourse, Community Speaks is the judge, jury, and executioner. So who's at fault for the Bucks Pacers drama in your opinion? Was Giannis too overdramatic or were the Pacers petty for taking the game ball? Best answer gets a shout out next video and gets up on the speaks board for a chance to win free NBA merch. Today's shout out goes to Elijah Woods who says, I do think as of right now Luka is the MVP, but two things need to continue to happen in order for that to eventually happen. First, the Mavs need to stay a top 3-4 to four seed. Second, Luka needs to keep dropping 32-8-9 on 48% shooting from the field. If those two things happen, it'll be a tough decision to not give Luka the MVP. Great take right there. Appreciate every answer. Your boy Deep Flow signed and off.